Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Advanced Convolutional Neural Networks. In this lecture, we're going to talk about how to optimize the loss we derived in the previous lecture. To recap, what's weird about this is that unlike a regular neural network doing supervised or unsupervised learning, we are not optimizing the model parameters. Instead, we are optimizing with respect to the input. I've mentioned in the past why I really like Theano for learning purposes, and I think this is really relevant here. So Keras is really nice in the sense that it wraps up a lot of the boilerplate stuff for you. But if we go way back to the more fundamental deep learning courses, if we use Keras, there basically wouldn't be any course in the first place because you'd be writing maybe three lines of code. What was interesting in those courses was what goes inside Keras. In this course, what we are studying is more like systems of neural networks, and so it makes sense to take the abstraction up a level. Unfortunately, this also has drawbacks. Keras makes it really easy to do things for common tasks, but the trade-off is that uncommon tasks become much more difficult. In particular, it's not super straightforward to do gradient descent on the input like it is on the parameters. You would just call the fit function. In fact, in this lecture, we won't use gradient descent at all we are going to look at something much better. One useful tool in Keras is that we can actually get the gradient of our loss with respect to any other variable in the graph, whether that be a model parameter or the input. This should remind you of Theano for those of you who know Theano. The syntax is exactly the same. In fact, if you're using Theano as a backend for Keras, this is exactly what it's doing. So now we have the gradients. We could theoretically do gradient descent, which we can set up exactly like we do in Theano, but like I mentioned earlier, we're going to attempt something that can work much better. So one of the neat features of SciPy is that it has this very general function optimizer. In fact, as you may recall, optimization is itself a course you can take. You'll learn techniques like linear programming, Newton's method, and more, in addition to plain vanilla gradient descent. This was like the machine learning course you'd take maybe 20 or 30 years ago. So anyway, SciPy has a whole suite of these functions. Some of them are second order methods, which means we have to take the gradient twice, so we won't be using those. However, there is a very popular method called LBFGS, which only requires the gradient, which is exactly what we have. Let's look at the interface of the function we're interested in, which is called fmin lbfgsb. If you want to check out the documentation yourself, I would recommend Googling it since the URL is very long and the version could change in the future. But the important arguments are func and x0. Func should be a function that returns the value we're trying to minimize, in this case, the content loss or the style loss, or both of them added together x0 is the initial value of x. Since this algorithm is iterative just like gradient descent, it needs somewhere to start from. Now if you're curious, let's also discuss some of the arguments that may seem interesting, but that we're not going to use. So the first is f prime. This is the gradient of f with respect to x. All of these minimization methods are gradient-based methods, so you need to be able to calculate the gradient somehow. But if you read the documentation carefully, you can see that this argument is optional under two special circumstances. Number one, you can just have the func argument return both the function value and the gradient simultaneously. This is convenient for us because the Anno and Keras and TensorFlow allow us to calculate multiple outputs given the same input all in one function call so we can return the loss and the gradient at the same time. We'd rather not have to make two separate function calls. And number two, the second special circumstance where you don't have to pass in the gradient is if you set the approxgrad argument to true. This is not ideal for us because we already know how to calculate the gradient. There's no need to approximate it. The exact value is always going to be much better. Furthermore, approximating the gradient is also going to be slow, so it's best not to do it.
The next possibly interesting argument is bounds. This allows us to specify a min and max value for x. We want to bound x because we know that image pixel values have to be from 0 to 255. Since VGG inputs are scaled and centered around the mean, that just means we want to be between minus 127.5 and plus 127.5. Unfortunately, setting this argument also makes the algorithm run much slower, so we're just not going to use it. Instead, we'll just truncate the value of x that we get each time the function is called. This is also related to the arguments max fun and max iter. Usually you could just leave these as is and call the fmin function just once and let it do its thing. But recall that as per the previous slide, in order to keep x bounded, we want to clip it every few steps. So what we're going to do instead is let fmin run a few times, clip x, and then let it run again in a loop. So we'll be alternating between optimizing using lbfgs and clipping x. Now as one last step, let's consider a problem that might not be obvious at first glance. The problem is this. All of SciPy's optimized functions assume that x, and hence the gradient f'x, x are vectors. The problem is, if our x is an image, it's going to be of shape 1 by height by width by 3. So let's suppose we write some Keras function to return the loss in the gradient given x. Let's call it get loss in grads. We would call this function like this. L comma G equals get loss in grads, and we pass in the image. And the shape of image would be one by height by width by three. L would be a scalar, and the shape of G would also be one by height by width by three. What we want, however, is the input and the gradient to both be vectors. So the solution is to write a wrapper function around this. Now with this function, we can see that it has the desired properties. Its input x can be a vector, which we reshape into an image. The gradient which it returns is originally the shape of an image, but we flatten it before returning it. So our wrapper function has the desired interface. One final note is that in the code, we're going to see that we cast the return values to float64. This is a weird bug in SciPy where it just doesn't work if you don't do this, so we have to cast the outputs to float64 in order for everything to work properly.